And I'm just going to be like a bridge to what you said. So like if it's the next page in your book. As a coach, I help my clients understand that when they are having a conversation, when they're not forgiving someone and they've got all this anger, mm -hmm. stop for a moment and think, what lesson can I learn from this? Instead of, like you said, bringing up the fear, the, even the hate, the, the, God, why can't they be me? Well, first of all, we can't put our heads on anybody else's shoulders. Um, and we, we really shouldn't do that either. Well, what is the lesson? Is that part of your forgiveness philosophy too? Because I know you go internally and, and I'm going to, that's one of my questions about, um, about internal forgiveness. But is that um, learning lessons from this? Tell, tell me what you think about that or don't you agree with what Joyce White just said? Andrew? No, absolutely. It sounds like you're um, sharing something that's deeply in alignment with one of the core five mindful improv skills you may recall uh, me sharing at the beginning of the book, which is gift orientation. So in improv, um, we're taught to receive anything that happens during the scene as a gift. Don't panic and feel like because somebody came into the scene and they, maybe they misunderstood for whatever reason, and they made you a train conductor when you thought that you were a carrot farmer, you don't need to panic. You don't need to feel angry at this person and feel like, why don't you listen better? Why you're always doing this? You know, you're, mm -hmm. this is so typical, you know, instead of that in improv, we're coached and trained to receive that as a gift. Is there a way that you are a carrot farmer who's a part-time volunteer train conductor and just like <laughs> rips off the overalls and it's like, woo, woo, all right, this is the way that I'm a superhero in this town. I serve so many purposes. Can you find a way? And you can because your brain is a powerful supercomputer and it loves to solve problems and it loves to make connections. Can you receive that as a gift? Second part of this is you give everything as a gift to the scene. You're not on the sidelines thinking, how can I prove I'm the funniest person on this team so that so-and-so in the audience notices me? <laughs> you know, the only reason to open your mouth, the only reason to contribute something is, is it a gift to the scene? Am I helping the scene get developed in some way? And the reason why what you said reminded me of that is that it's really easy when you walk into a conversation and feel like I've done the work mm -hmm. to enter this mindfully. I've mm -hmm. done the work to be understanding you did the work to be a giant butthead, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like you are making this hard for me when you decide and to just commit to gift orientation, you don't miss the gift because of the wrapping paper. You're like, this is happening for me, not to me. This person is helping me realize that we need different screening questions in our interview process. We need different culture standards. We needed a process for this feedback to get run up the flagpole sooner. Otherwise, they wouldn't be shouting at me right now. There needed, there was a way that this needed to get released, and there mm -hmm. wasn't. And now this is happening. So wow. there's a gift. I oh my god! You see that this is not a planned. You know, even though we talk, I always talk to my guests before just to make sure that they have some kind of personality and they, and they know that, <laughs> I'm so that glad it, I passed that. Oh, oh it's, it's tough when you're on this show and that they understand it's a conversation, not a lecture. Uh, we're having a real conversation here, Andrea. So thank you for that. So we are speaking the same language. We don't have to, but we are.